Hello and welcome to another chapter of Talk Books. Um, today I am going to be talking about Darwin. I'm also going to be keeping an ear to outside. Um, and if I suddenly disappear, it's because I'm taking part in the garden bird race. Um, I've spent most of the day looking for birds, not doing too brilliantly. I haven't even hit 20 yet, but then that's my garden for you. Um, but what I'll do is I'll talk about these and hope that I don't get too distracted. So I'm going to talk about the origin of the species. It's it's where, well, it's actually not where evolution all began. Evolution began way before that, but it was the mechanism for evolution that uh, Darwin put in place. And what I've done is, because I've, I've had loads of different versions of this, um, starting from one that you can probably get for about a pound in the works, um, right up to sort of these copies. Uh, there was even a copy which was an anniversary issue that um, one of the famous artists, I can't ever remember his name, uh, Damien Hurst, uh, did the cover for. Um, I haven't got that one, it was too expensive. Um, but what I have got are these. Now, I've picked out two. The reason I picked out two is because this is my favourite from a packaging point of view. And not only from a packaging point of view, but also the fact that it's actually, it's some of the complete works of Darwin. Um, he is obviously very famous for Origin of the Species and The Voyage of the Beagle, uh, but he also wrote The Descent of Man, uh, he wrote The Expressions of Emotion, he wrote um, a book about barnacles, a book about worms, uh, all of them equally fascinating, and both from a scientific point of view, but also an insight into the man. Anybody that would play an oboe to a worm clearly was more obsessed than I was, because I can't play an oboe. Um, so, what we'll talk about here is this particular volume. Now this volume, it actually incorporates all the first editions of, or the first versions of, of Darwin's work. So it does have the Voyage of the Beagle in it, has the, on the origin of species, the descent of man and the expression of emotion, emotions in man and animals. Uh, which if you haven't read any of them, then you really should. Uh, but again, expect it to be a little bit hard going because of the fact that it's written in Old English. But it's quite weird because you soon get into the, the flow of it. You, it doesn't take long before you're actually, you're able to understand and read it and think, yeah, okay, yeah, I know, I know what he means now. Because the way they structured sentences was a little bit different then, but you soon get into the flow of that. And I would definitely say, you know, give it a bash. Uh, there's also, just on a sideline, it's not a book, but there's a CD version of The Origin of the Species read by Richard Dawkins, uh, which if you wanted to get an introduction that actually is quite a good way to go because then you can hear the phraseology and how he talks and all the rest of it and it's amazing that if you have heard a book beforehand and or you've heard somebody like David Attenborough on the television and then you read one of his books you can hear them speaking it and it actually sometimes whether it might just be me but it actually helps you then to read and understand the book but back to Origin of the Species. Origin of the Species is clearly where the controversy began for a start, um, but also where the structure of evolution came from. Evolution, as I say, does go back a lot further than Darwin. I mean, there was some of the uh, some of the ancient Greeks were talking about evolution way back then. But Darwin actually put a structure together for it, and that is what the origin of the species is. It took him years and years and years and years to write it. In the end, he wasn't going to publish it. It was only the fact that Wallace, who I will talk about later on in, in another chapter, uh, that you know Wallace actually came up with a similar theory and it was Darwin's friends that then talked him into publishing The Origin of the Species. So The Origin of the Species basically talks about how variation and natural selection work and you know he did things like he kept pigeons to see it in action, um, he looked at domestication, he looked at domestic animals and he drew on lots of his findings from his voyages around in particular the Galapagos uh, but wider as well. Uh, the Galapagos gave him things like um, the differences in the tortoises on the different islands, the difference in the finches, um, but it wasn't actually the difference in the finches that triggered, a lot of people think it was just the finches, that triggered some of his thinking. It was actually the difference in mockingbirds. And he bought some skins of mockingbirds back and they were looked at by uh, Gould, who was one of the top ornithologists at the time. And it was in discussions with him that he also, that helped fuel his, 
his understanding and his route through this mechanism for evolution. So you'll sort of learn about a lot of that in this book. Um, you know, that's what it's about. It's, it's about him applying what his learnings and findings were to be able to explain how evolution works. And I'm sure that the bulk of people out there that I'm talking to have read it. But if you haven't read it, this is a great volume to get uh, because then you've got all of the others in one volume and it comes fantastically packaged as you can see. Now then, the other one I've chosen is, I've chosen this one really because of two things. Number one, because it's illustrated. Um, that makes it a little bit more, a little bit easier to read because you've got pictures and you've got pictures that are actually related back to the text. Um, not just Darwin's pictures, which this one still has got in, um, but in this one you've got sort of various photographs as well that also uh, give you an idea of what he's, what he's actually alluding to, what he's talking about. And this one is um, an illustrated edition of The Origin of the Species. It was released for one of the anniversaries, um, I think it was the 150th anniversary. And it's also got an introduction by uh, David Kamen, who was actually the general editor of this. He, he, he pulled this together and it, it not only has the origin of the species in it, it also draws from some of Charles Darwin's other books. Uh, so The Voyage of the Beagle, it draws from some of his letters. So it actually gives you insight into Darwin as well as a person, but also some of his thinking. So some of the thinkings behind some of the chapters which you don't get from the origin of the species. You get that from other books like his biography, his autobiographies, and things like this, where David Kamen's done a great job in, in pulling pieces out of the Voyage of the Beagle that will demonstrate um, some of what Darwin was actually talking about. So if you're gonna read The Origin of the Species, that's a great one to have. Um, you could start off with getting the one for a quid from works. Um, but I, I guarantee you, once you've read it, you'll, you'll sort of want to get a, a few decent copies in this. Again, that's just me. Um, but this one, again, because it's got the pictures in, makes it a bit easier to read. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump forward dramatically. And I'm going to introduce you to Steve Jones. Now, Steve Jones has written some great books. Um, I've got most of his, if not all of his, because I'm a geek like that. Uh, but this was the first one I came across. And I, I, I think... I think it was actually bought for me, but it was bought for me because of what it says on the front, the origin of the species updated. And it is exactly that. It is the origin of the species. Uh, all of the chapters follow the origin of the species, both by title and in order. And it basically puts a modern spin on what Darwin was sort of alluding to in the origin of the species. So I suppose if you were looking to, to read The Origin of the Species and you, you're a little bit put off by the fact that you might have to read this one in the Old English. This might be actually a good route in uh, and a good starting point because you will then get the context of what the origin was and you can then go back and read the original by Charles Darwin. And the other thing with the Charles Darwin book is that I would say dip in and out of it. If, if you're not used to reading the Old English, then maybe just read it, sort of read a chapter and then sort of move on to something else and come back to it. Or even read a chapter of that and a chapter of this. And then that way it, you'll probably get a far, far better understanding of where Darwin was coming from. So I hope you enjoyed the coverage of the origin of species and in the next chapter I'm going to talk about the third of sort of the Victorian era uh, great explorers and scientists. Um, this one did sit very much in the shadow of Darwin and more recently has been sort of a little bit more renowned and come to the front and that is Alfred Russell Wallace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about his Malay Archipelago, which is actually one of my favourite books. Uh, it's a fantastic book of his, uh, his travels through the Malay Archipelago, go figure. And we'll talk about that one. And then we'll also talk about what I think is sort of the best piece I've read about him uh, biographically. And that is um, 
a life so Alfred Russell Wallace a life by Peter Raby it's it's a really good insight into uh, Wallace um, and what we'll do is we'll cover both of those books in the next chapter so I hope to see you then and if you're enjoying sort of the book reviews and also the other videos I put up about wildlife and conservation and conservation projects and please subscribe to the channel thanks very much